What's up you guys, it's Matt here. So in this video, I wanted to talk to you about the largest credit card issuers in the United States. And this is something that I've been interested in just to really go through the numbers here and um, understand why credit card companies or credit card issuers are so popular. Um, and also, you know, how much they're doing in transactions. Um, that's really interesting to me. But before I start, make sure you hit the like button on this video. Also hit the subscribe button for more videos just like this one. And I do a giveaway every single week. So if you want to know about that giveaway, stick around to the end of the video and you'll hear all about it. So according to the Nielsen Report, these are the biggest United States credit card issuers by purchase volume in 2018. So I know it's 2020, but a lot of uh, information comes from the past. It makes sense. You're not going to get information from the future. Um, you can get some from the present, but um, most of it's going to come from the past. So 2018 gives you a clear picture on where they were, um, and I'll be excited to see you know what 2019 really held. But these cards uh, basically accounted for three trillion dollars in transactions that year. So that's huge. Trillion with a TR. Trillion. That's a lot of money. Um, so let's go ahead and get into the top issuer. So before I get into the breakdown of the largest credit card issuers here, make sure you give me your list down below. I'm really interested to see what your list will be before I get into the breakdown of my list. So um, make sure you stop this video right now and you create your list and then you watch the rest of the video and see if you were right and see you know, you know know where you were wrong and all those other type of things. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm starting at number five. So um, obviously, there's going to be other ones, honorable mentions here, but um, starting at number five, only giving you a list of five, um, and then we can go into the honorable mentions as well. And then I'll list all of them in order. So I'll give you the full list so that you can check if you're right. Um, first, let's start with Capital One. So Capital One is number five at $336 billion. And I hope you didn't pause this and you know get all of the information from the internet and find a way to paste it in here so that you can be as right as possible. You don't get an award for doing this, so um, I just want to see what everybody thinks. So don't go to Google and type it in. But Capital One accounts for $336.9 billion, um, and it has 15 plus cards, and the net income was roughly, in 2019, was $1.6 So um, that's number five. I don't blame Capital One for only having 15 plus cards. It it makes sense. They don't really offer too much. It's more on the lines of um, cash back for every single purchase and that's pretty much it. Or points for every single purchase or miles for every single purchase. Um, and that's pretty much it. So I understand where they're coming from. I have had my problems with Capital One, but they're doing um, good things here at you know, $336 billion in transactions. Absolutely amazing. Um, the next company is Bank of America at $360.73 billion in transactions. They have about 10 plus cards. And I always put plus because there's always cards out there that I'm not aware of that don't really um, fall in line with whatever website I'm looking at or um, anything like that. So Bank of America, 10 plus credit cards, uh, net income of roughly $27.4 billion. And that's not just from credit cards. Let me uh, premise this now. This is not just from credit cards. It's from overall um, profits, overall revenue. So um, just want to make that clear. But Bank of America, $360 billion. Um, the next one is City. City has $410 billion in transactions, 15 plus cards, a net income of roughly $5 billion. All right, now we're getting into the last two, and you probably can guess which ones are where. You have a 50 50 chance because you're not going to say any other stupid company is you know, above these two companies. So the number two spot goes to Chase. It goes to Chase at $739 billion in transactions. So much higher than Citi, uh, Bank of America, and Capital One. It's just so much higher. Um, Chase has roughly 20 plus credit cards um, available. They have a net income of $36.4 billion. Um, that's throughout all of Chase, so it's not 
just strictly their cards. I know they lost two hundred million dollars on like the Sapphire alone or something like that, a Sapphire reserve. So I understand that. But Chase has great cards. Um, not cards that I'm really interested in because I get a lot of value out of American Express, but um Chase has good cards. A lot of people love them. Um, and you can guess what number one is. It's American Express. At $754 billion, American Express comes in num- at number one. They have 30 plus credit cards available and a net income of roughly $1.7 billion, which is something that I was kind of, um, I don't know, weirded out by. Because, I mean, it just looks off. But that's what I pulled from the internet, and you can always trust what's on the internet, right? But the the list, I do have some honorable mentions here. So I have um, U.S. Bank. Um, U.S. Bank is at $145.69 billion. Discover is at $139.3 billion, $0.03 billion. And then Wells Fargo is at $134.06 billion dollars. So the list in its entirety is American Express number one, Chase number two, Citibank number three, Bank of America number four, Capital One number five, and then U.S. Bank number six, uh, Discover number seven, and Wells Fargo number eight. Um, So I was a little surprised about Wells Fargo. I thought they would be a little bit higher, but I guess not. Um, You have Discover a little bit higher than Wells Fargo and U.S. Bank higher than Wells Fargo as well. I thought they would be at the top of that honorable mentions list, but they weren't. I actually thought they might have been above Capital One, but that's not the case either. So it's interesting to see. And these are the top issuers. And I mean, there's a reason why. I mean, you look at Chase, they have 20 plus cards. You look at American Express, they have 30 plus cards. It makes sense how things are going down the list. And that's my list. I mean, um, when I look at all of these cards, it makes sense why they're there. American Express and Chase are at the top. They're pretty much neck and neck at $700 plus uh, billion in transactions. Um, A lot of people are using their cards, and they're going to continue to use their cards. And I would say that American Express is more on the higher end of transactions, so they're making more of the higher purchases. If we look at the purchase volume, you're probably going to see a lot lower purchases with Chase and a lot higher purchases with Amex. Obviously, because you have like the black card out there, you have the platinum, you have the gold card, you have these uh, these higher tier cards, um, a lot of higher tier cards versus you know maybe one or two higher tier cards. I consider those higher tier cards as the J.P. Morgan Reserve or the Chase Sapphire Reserve. So um, that's my list. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you got any right. Um, but that's pretty much it. I'm kind of interested to see what 2019 holds um, just because there was a lot of um, change with credit cards, with issuers, with, you know, a lot of things out there. So I would like to see exactly, you know, what that change is. And I can't wait to do that video. Um, But that's my video on the largest issuers. Um, Let me know if you like it. Um, The way you let me know is you hit that like button. And you can comment down below and let me know that you liked it. Um, Also, subscribe to the channel. Um, That helps me out a lot. Hit that little bell notification. And remember that I do a giveaway. I give away two Amazon gift cards every single week. And um, all you have to do in order to enter that giveaway is like, comment, and subscribe on all my videos. I know you can only subscribe on one, but like and comment on all of them. Um, Also, make sure you subscribe to both of my YouTube channels, not just this one. Um, also subscribe to this one. And if you do that, you're going to get one ticket in the hat. But if you want multiple tickets up to seven, then you comment on all of the videos that you can, and you'll get seven tickets um, for each comment that you put. Um, But make sure you're subscribed. Um, But I'm going to have to get out of here. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.